some guys are gonna go fly under the radar it just is what it is and sometimes you might be a late late bloomer you peak later uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons why you may not have been noticed but this is what I'm saying about your end game shouldn't be your 16 year old year yeah because if it is then you're gonna be you're setting up you're setting yourself up for like major disappointments and it's just not fair to yourself there's countless guys that make the National Hockey League or get their school paid for and they get it at 20. The countless guys, and mm-hmm. I know it's not. You just don't. It's it's just better. It's nicer to see yourself succeed at sixteen. Right? Well, it's easier was, on your life. That was me. I was one yeah. of those guys. Right. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me. It was. Yeah. I got it later. I got my school paid for later. That's just what happened. Yeah, but this you is know? what I would say to guys. Like, and I say it to my son, even though I'm pretty confident that he's going to get drafted fairly high. You, if you don't set your sight at sixteen, like, what do you want out of this game? Yep. Like, what do you want out of this game? Like, so if you don't want to have, like, if you don't have a lofty goal, then you probably shouldn't be that disappointed, yeah. right? But if you have a lofty goal, like, and, you know, if it's pro, you want to be a pro, I think that's a great goal because it's the biggest you can get to be an NHL or, or whatever. And obviously, there's not that many jobs. But when you decide, if that's your plan A and you want to go for it, then when you're 16, it's like, okay, this is a disappointment. This got in the way for now. Okay, like, next. You know what I mean? It's not like at 16 and like life's over because let's let's be real, real realistic about this. Most guys that get drafted at 16 aren't playing in the Ontario Hockey League anyways. Yep. There's there's only 40 Definitely. spots a year, and that's 40 aren't necessarily taken. Yep. So you're probably not playing at 16 anyway. So what are you going to do about that year? Like if you get drafted in the second round to, like I think I said this before, to London Knights who has, always has a deep team, and they say, well, we want you to marinate for a year in junior B, would you go there with a bad attitude because you would just want to play on the big team? Like ego, like you always talk about, it's ego, 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 ego. It's like, okay, what's what do I need to do? I need to get better. So if our long-term goal is to play in the National Hockey League at 22 or 23 and get your school paid for it, you know, take your goals down a little bit, but if that's the end goal, okay, so I didn't make it at 16, I didn't get drafted. So, okay, so what do you do next year? You play another year of midget? That's not that bad. Do you play junior B, tier two, junior A, something like that? And if you do, if you get better every year, right? So if I go play midget and I think I should have been drafted, go play like you should have been drafted. And if you're a goal scorer, put the puck in the net, make plays, get better at a couple deficiencies. If you do that very well, you will get a shot. You will. And if it takes you till 18, you still, it's the plan. You go to yeah. the plan. I'm going to give myself till 21 years old and see where I'm with this, let's say. So 16 to 20 is four more years of, of mucking it out, yeah. right? So if you start honing your game for f- five, six years, you will be a better player. And if you have a purpose, like that, my, I want to have that goal. So what happens now is you look back. If you make the NHL or you get a college scholarship to Boston College at 20, you accomplish something, man. And you can look back at that one day at 16 and say, who cares? Because it didn't matter. I became a better person even possibly. Mm. But the point is, is it's like even running the business, right? If I, if, if I don't get what I exactly want right now, does that mean my business is done? No, mm. it's just, a, it's not even an obstacle. It's just a thing. It's not your time yet. You got to yeah. learn. You got to get better. You're not ready. It's testing you. Because yep. everyone's going to get a shit sandwich at some point. It's coming. I was just going to say that, man. Yeah. Like some kids, and and listen, kids, dads, moms, for that are listening, there's going to be more disappointed people than happy people in a month. Way more disappointed people. But it's just your first shit sandwich. And my thing is when I was talking to one of the boys the other day, I said, so you got a shit sandwich. Now what? Do you quit? Why are you playing hockey? What's the purpose? What is your purpose of playing hockey? Did you play hockey to get drafted to the OHL? Or did you play hockey for another reason? And hopefully, hopefully it's deeper than that. And if it is a deeper reason, then you continue to play for the love of the game. Yep. And then you learn the lesson. You got to go into the truth mirror. You got to look at yourself and, you know, hey, have a pity party, 100%. 100%. Poor me. But you got to get out of that. You got to look in the mirror and say, okay, there's a reason I, that, that 20 teams, 15, they had 15 chances to look at me. They didn't take me. Or maybe you got taken really, really late, way, way later than you thought. There's a reason. What is the reason? And you have to be truthful because if you don't, if you don't look in that mirror and you actually answer the question truthfully, you have nothing to fix. If you can't fix it, it's, it's always going to be broken. You're not going to get to where you need to go. Yeah. So it's really that simple, but you have to be honest with yourself and you have to say, okay, I have to fix this and, and, uh, and get to work because you still have a long way to go. Yeah. Well, the, the issue with the, 
uh, especially when you're talking about parents, they, the, we've talked about some a million times, so I'm not going to like rehash it, but the, the parents setting their kids up for failure because they're not being honest about the situation, whether that's verbally or they're just ignoring it and not saying anything about it. Either way. Lying by omission. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're kids, Still lying. Their kids aren't getting ready for, to deal with the shit sandwich. So yeah. that's, that's the first part is if, if you, you know, coming into this, if you're not going to be a super, super, super high pick, then you need to understand you might not get what you're, th- what you're expecting. Yeah. And the funny thing about the, the draft is I remember I'll give it like a little, my story. So I didn't get drafted. I went and played my midget major year, triple A. I got cut from every junior team in the area, all the junior B teams, late and, birthday, late birthday. I didn't want to play junior C because I didn't like, didn't like the development, I didn't like the development process. So I went back and I played midget major and that ended up being the best thing I could have done because I had an absolutely unreal year. I was the, probably the best player in our league. And then halfway through the year, I got signed to a junior B team. And then by the end of that year, I'm playing junior B again. So now I go, I'm go. i playing junior B when I was just devastated three months earlier yeah. because I didn't make a junior team and I didn't get drafted. Now I'm, now I'm playing junior, getting called up. And guess who I'm playing against? All those guys that got drafted. Yeah. They're all in the same league. Yeah. Now yeah. we're all together again. Yeah. And then exactly what more times than not from what I could tell, and because I ended up getting to know a lot of these players, they that's exactly what they did. They got drafted. They didn't make it. They had a shit attitude because they're prima donna drafted fifth round, and they think that they should be playing with the big boys. Yeah. And they came down, and they played poorly in junior B. They didn't even play better in junior B. Yeah. So not only did they not make the OHL, now they're not even hanging in there in junior B. And that's what happens is a lot of those guys, they, they just fizzle off. They end up being career junior B guys or worse. They'll, they'll even get cut from junior B or they'll get traded around or whatever and end up in junior C or quit hockey or whatever. That happened way more times than it didn't happen. Absolutely. And that's, that's exactly the, the problem that a lot of these OHL guys could come in to, could run into because they didn't get their shit sandwich yet. So you don't get drafted. There's your shit sandwich. You got to deal with it. You got to figure it out. And then you go up to start playing your, your next year, the following year after your draft. And then that's when all those kids that got drafted get their shit sandwich because they didn't, they don't get to play yeah. or they're getting healthy scratched all the yeah. time or they don't, don't didn't make the team and got sent down. Yeah. And now they have to deal with the same shit that you just dealt with Yeah. now. Oh yeah, I got drafted, but I'm still not good enough to play. And now I'm playing against this kid I played against last year in triple a we're in the same league now. That's exactly what happened. And then yeah. slowly you're the guy that just keeps working and keeps working and keeps working. And you keep chipping away and all those guys that thought they were awesome because they got drafted just keep going down and down and down because they got a shit attitude. They're not working on the things that they should be working on. They're not getting better. And they're, then they just fizzle out. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And that happens all the time. Yeah. All the time.